I am not wearing my pajamas. I decided to wear slacks. So this week, as we were uh, just thinking about church and pondering, I got thinking uh, just about where we are in this country and where we are in church and the fact that we're sort of disbanded and uh, scattered this morning. We're going to talk about that later, being scattered as a church. And I was driving home, I think it was Thursday night, and the lyrics to the song came to my mind that said, when the music fades and all is stripped, and all is stripped away and I simply come, I just want to bring something that blesses your heart this morning, Lord. And I want us to sing that this morning. It's like the Lord has kind of stripped all the production away, stripped all the normalcy away, and maybe the things we've taken for granted. And I just want us where we are. There's a few of us here in the building and many of you at home. Uh, just to spend the next minute or so worshiping the Lord in your own place. Okay, can we do that? Say amen. amen. I know you're saying amen and I can't hear you. When the music fades and all is stripped away and I sing Hallelujah, our God. 
So, Facebook family, here's the deal. Um, if you can hear me, let me know because uh, we were having. We want to make sure our sound is proper. We haven't done this in a while with our Facebook official microphone. So, if the volume is fine, um, if it's not fine, let me know. How about we do that? Because you can't really tell me it's good. So. If you are watching us on Facebook this morning, do me a favor, uh, leave a comment, put something encouraging in the comments so that we know that we have people attending church that are not live and in person. We do have a smattering of people here. We are under the mandated 10 people count, so we're safe and uh, we're not hugging, unfortunately. We're not high-fiving. We're waving to each other out of the goodness of the abundance of the mercy of the Lord. So uh, if you're with us this morning on Facebook, do me a favor, just um, leave a comment throughout the video so we know you're here, and that way we can kind of get in attendance as well. But mostly we want you to encourage one another uh, as we're kind of living in our, what's the new term? Social distancing. So we are socially distanced from one another. So if you've had a good week, I hope you've had a good week. This is craziness going on right now in the world and in our country. And we're going to just spend a few minutes this morning talking about some things that are pertinent to where we are at the storehouse and um, to where we are in our series called Hearing God. We okay on Facebook? Okay, just checking. So let's do this. We are in a series called Hearing God. It's actually technically, I think, week seven or eight. I've lost track. Um, it's seven or eight. And we're going to kind of stay on the series this morning, but we're actually going to take a little bit of a side road and a detour uh, in light of everything that's happened over the last month and especially over the last week. As you are all very familiar with right now, uh, we're living in an uh, unprecedented time in this country and certainly in the church. Uh, it was amazing how in one week, uh, you couldn't have a gathering of 250, then it went down to a gathering of 100, and then in two days later it went down to you can't be more than 50, and then the next day it was no more than 10 people can gather together, and it just happened so fast that we're all just kind of a little bit stunned by this, and churches everywhere are uh, scrambling to make sure that we can keep the flock intact and keep ourselves together. So, at the end of our sermon today, at the end of our message, uh, hang out with us. we got a few things to talk about as to what church looks like for the next few weeks going forward. So um, we're not going to keep you really long this morning. We have no announcements since everything has been suspended. Um, I've got some things to talk about at the end. But let's talk about our message, Hearing God, this morning, because we're still in this series, and I think it's appropriate 
that during this time that we're talking about hearing God, that suddenly we're kind of dispersed and we're scattered. And I have a theory about why this is happening. We're going to share that in just a minute. So in the last couple of weeks, we've had some things taken away from us that we took for granted, I believe. There's really not many, not much... Not many sports left on television. We've had that removed. Uh, live events have been removed. Entertainment has been shut down. Social gatherings have been canceled. Dining out has been canceled. You okay back there, honey? Yeah, I'm afraid. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, so dining out has been canceled. Social events have been canceled. Uh, going to the gym has been canceled. So basically everything we do to be social and interact and get outside has been canceled. And I said, Lord, what's going on? And I kind of feel like sometimes God just wants to do some things to get our attention. Amen. Let's take away all of the busyness in life and see if we can get people's attention for a little bit. <clears throat> Pastor Ricky Temple had a great video this week I was watching as he was talking to his church. And he likens it to this, and I thought this was such a great illustration. It's like when you're a parent and your kids are just running around the house. Now, they're not necessarily disobeying all the time, but maybe they're just running around being busy and being kids and being occupied, and you're trying to get their attention, and they're not really paying attention. They're just scattered running around, and the parent has to stand up at some point and say, hey, 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 stop, I need your attention. And I kind of feel that might be what God is doing a little bit saying, you know what, I've got something important to say, and I really need your attention. I need you to stop what you're doing and pay attention. I'm not saying that God is punishing us, but it does kind of feel like we're in time out a little bit. You know, you can't do these things anymore. You just sit there, young man, and think about what you were doing. Now, I'm not, God's not punishing you and me, but I will say this. I sincerely believe that he needs to get our attention. And he, as the song says, he stripped away all of the things that have become our distractions, all of the things that may have become our priorities. And God says, I need you to just listen. Maybe he's saying to you, we haven't talked in a while. I got some things I really need to tell you. Maybe he's saying to some of you, hey, we haven't talked in a while. I'd really love to hear what's going on in your life. I believe God simply wants to get our attention. So what is God trying to say to us? I pondered this for the week. And I said, Lord, if you really are sitting us down and wanting to get our attention, what is it you would have to say to us and specific, to the body of Christ in general, but also what would you have to say specifically to the storehouse? And I was praying this week. And I believe the Lord is saying four things specifically to the storehouse. And hopefully on Facebook you can see the slides at home. I want you to write these things down because we're going to be praying about these things throughout the week. So I believe God is there's four things he wants you to know specifically. Number one is this. God was not caught unaware, nor is he surprised that any of this happened. God is omniscient. He knows everything. He knows our past. He knows the future. Nothing catches him by surprise. And while we may be stunned a little bit and surprised and, and, and uh, impacted by all of this that's going on, God saw it coming. I love the scripture in Psalm 139.16, and I want you to take this personally. The word of God says that you saw me before I was born. And if you have a Bible, an old-fashioned Bible, or you can highlight this in your electronic version, I want you to underline the words, every day. Because <laughs> the psalmist says, every day of my life was recorded in your book. And even more refined than that, he goes on to say, every moment of my life was laid out before a single day had passed. God isn't taken by surprise. He saw this coming. Matter of fact, he factored it into your life. And he knew before you did 
what this was going to be like in this very trying time. I love the fact that he knows every day of my life and every moment. So number one, God is not caught unaware, nor is he surprised. Number two, I want you to realize I believe God is saying this this morning, that he has been preparing us for this very moment. You say, well, pastor, what do you mean? Well, I did a little rewinding in my mind over the past week, and the Lord reminded me of some things, and I love how God works. And the Lord said simply to this pastor, for this church, remind the church that they have been preparing and training for this time, in this life, in this country, in Jesus' name, you are ready for this. Let me show you what I mean. He not only knew that this was coming, but he's been preparing us. I want you to think about this for a minute. Let's take a little trip down memory lane. Here at the storehouse, we've identified, if we'll put the next slide up, who we are and what we believe. We spent a whole year last year talking about our identity in Jesus, what we believe. Do you remember why we did that? We did that for the sole purpose that we could clearly articulate our faith in Jesus Christ that we could clearly communicate exactly who we are in the body of Christ by the blood of Jesus and what our faith in Jesus Christ means, what we believe. We started with our, our basic four-square foundational doctrine that Jesus Christ is the Savior, the mighty baptizer in the Holy Spirit, the healer and the soon-coming King. We spent a year talking about salvation and all kinds of things. God laid the foundation last year so that we could communicate our faith in Christ. The world is just in a in, a, in a, almost a panic right now. They're uneasy and they're anxious. We are the people in our faith in Christ that bring the hope and the peace to our family and our friends. If you're still with me, say amen. amen. So we spent an entire year preparing for this. And then at the beginning of this year, God said, look, now that you know who you are and you have this message and you're standing on solid ground, he's told us to go, go out into the world, preach the gospel. How do we do that? We love locally so that we will reach globally. All of this has taken place over the last 18 months. This is not a coincidence. God has been preparing the storehouse for such a time as this. <laughs> Now, maybe we're not really good at going. So God said, okay, really? Let's just close the doors. Now you got to go. And now we're out there where we got to be. This is where the Lord's called us to be. So he's been preparing us for this for over 18 months. And for some of you, all of your spiritual life, God has been preparing you for this time that we live in. Does that make sense? Say amen. Amen. <clears throat> so he's called us to go. He's been preparing us for over a year. I love the scripture. And Luke says this, the harvest is bigger than you can imagine, but there are very few workers. Therefore, plead with the Lord of the harvest to send out workers to gather in the harvest. That's what he's called you and I to do. The harvest, many versions say, the harvest is ripe. It is ready. Everything is ready to be gathered. The problem isn't the harvest. Jesus doesn't say, pray that the harvest will be ready. The problem is we don't have enough people out there working, gathering up the lost and those that are hurting and those that need Christ. There's not enough people gathering, those, those, them, gathering the harvest up and bringing them in to the knowledge of the kingdom of God. So the Lord is saying, guess what? I'm going to send workers. We are those workers. If you're with me, say amen. So he's not caught unaware, number one. Number two, he's been preparing us. Here at the storehouse, he's been preparing us for the last 18 months to two years to share our faith and have a, have a, a story that's powerful. <clears throat> number three, I want you to know that God is saying he's sending us. It's time to go. Yeah. You know, uh, I, I liken this a lot. And you've heard me say this in this in in the church quite a bit. I liken the church to um, to a football game. Sunday morning is the huddle, and we come together and we learn the play and and we we get God's plan for the week and 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 he he gives us insight, spiritual insight, and he gives us wisdom for the people that we're going to run into and and have encounters with. But you know what? If we always just stayed in the huddle, it would be a very boring football game. 
If you went to the Super Bowl, which is going to be in Tampa next year and probably have Tom Brady in it still, that's amazing. Um, and you spent $5,000 for a seat because that's what they go for. And the two teams, Kansas City and whoever they're playing, always just stay in the huddle on the field. You're going to be pretty upset you spent $5,000 on a seat. And that's kind of what Sunday has been for us. It's been the huddle. We come together, we get the plan, and then at the end of Sunday, we break, and that the plan is to go out and execute what we've learned in the Word of God. So I'm telling you this morning, church, the huddle is over. We're still gathering live stream. We're going to talk on Wednesday night. I'm going to tell you about that in a little bit. But God is sending us out. And in fact, He has sent us out. The church has never been about the four walls of the building. It's about being the body of Christ and demonstrating His love. And yes, we can do that amongst ourselves, but the real demonstration of the love of Christ is to get out of our comfort zone with other believers and demonstrate the love of Christ to our family, our friends, our co-workers, and our neighbors. Are you with me? Say amen. amen. Throughout history, listen to me, throughout history, Whenever the church was scattered, it always grew as the gospel was taken to the people. You know, we look at this, and I, I, I have to confess, when all of this happened, and we realized we couldn't get together, my plan was to have one, last, one more service with our group here live so we could take communion and we could answer questions and talk about the future, and um, that wasn't able to happen. Uh, that got canceled by people higher than me. And I was a little upset. I'm not going to deny it. I was a little unhappy. I don't like the situation. But here's what I do know. I do know this. That while we are being forced outside of the walls of the church, God can and historically has done amazing things when the church has left the building. And now we're kind of being forced to leave the building and we're scrambling, figuring out how we're gonna do some things. We'll talk about that in a minute. But here's the thing. The fact is that now that we're not gathered together and we're forced to be creative and, and think in different ways, what a great, this could be the single great in our lifetime to minister the gospel locally, reach globally because people are anxious, they're afraid, they're uncertain, and we've got a word of hope and encouragement. This is an unprecedented time to reach large numbers of people that are desperately searching for something to hold on to. I believe God has sent us out. Listen how the parallel of this, by the way, our, my plan as a pastor was this, that at the uh, end of our series on hearing God, we were actually going to go into the book of Acts for the rest of this year and talk about how the church functions outside the church. I don't think that's a coincidence. I think the Lord is preparing us and we'll be studying that in the next few weeks, probably right after Easter, about how the Lord has prepared the church to be outside of the four walls. But I want you to see this scripture in Acts chapter 2. Very familiar, and it talks about how the first church was started. But I want you to highlight some things in your Bible and in your mind. It says this, The believers spent their time, first off, listening to the teaching of the apostles. While we are a little bit dispersed and scattered, stay faithful in the word. Yes, you can listen to your pastor as an apostle and a teacher, but all I'm giving you is the same message the Lord gives me. So you have access to the same Bible, the same Holy Spirit. Stay connected to the Word of God. Listen to the teaching of Jesus. Stay close. They shared everything they had with each other. If you have 40 rolls of toilet paper, we need some. <laughs> Matter of fact, that's the new tithe. If you buy a case of toilet paper, we're expecting you to send some to the church. Tithing has not been canceled. Please, we will accept your toilet paper as a tithe. They ate together and they prayed together. You know, you can still get together. We just can't get together in groups of more than 10. And make sure you're getting together with people that are healthy. If you feel sick or you don't feel well and something's coming upon you, stay home and... Um, Isolate yourself socially for, for a 
season. If you're well and you're healthy, this isn't martial law. We can still get together in small groups. And guess what? That's how the church got started, small groups. So they ate together and they prayed together. Here's what I love. Many wonders and miraculous signs were happening through the apostles, and everyone felt great respect for God. The love of God was growing abundantly. Why? Because God was doing marvelous things in the midst of small groups. You guys can get together during the week, week, have small groups, pray for one another, watch God move in your finances and in your health, and watch God wipe out sickness, and watch God repair relationships. This is a marvelous time for the body of Christ to be healed and come together. Say amen. All believers stayed together. We may not be able to come together corporately, but it is critically important that we stay together. God has called us to stay together. We're going to talk more about that in a minute. So all believers stayed together and they shared everything. They sold their land and the things they own. They divided the money and gave it to those who needed it. The believers shared a common purpose. Do you know we still share a common purpose? And that's to spread the love and the good news of Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Culture isn't necessarily established by us just coming together and being together. Culture is established when we share a common vision. And when we rally around that vision, culture remains intact. It's going to look a little different over the next few months as we remain intact virtually. And our youth group comes together via uh, live video conferencing and our ladies video conference and, and, and our men's group conferences, it's going to look and feel a little different. But the continuity of the vision is what keeps us connected and we must, must, must stay connected. <clears throat> they divided the money. Uh, let's see, the believers shared a common purpose and every day they spent much of their time together in the temple area. Look, at we can't gather in the temple anymore, but we can certainly get together every day. They also ate together in their homes. They were happy to share their food, and they ate with joyful hearts. Uh, many of the versions say they shared their food and they ate with great generosity. Remember during this time to be generous. We're going to talk about that in just at the end of this, but generosity needs to flow out of need. It's easy to be generous when we have everything. It's a little more challenging to be generous when things seem to be uh, chipping away a little bit. This is not the time to back down in our love and generosity. It's the time to sow according to our need. Because you will reap in the manner that you sow. The believers praised God and were respected. Let me stop here. The believers praised God. <laughs> You know, it's easy to look around and grumble and complain and say, man, I hate not being with my church. And I got to tell you, church, I hate not meeting together. I'm not going to lie. I love being with you folks on Sunday and during the week. And this is driving this pastor bananas. But it's not permanent. It's a season. We're going to believe that this is a season. It is not the new normal. I refuse new normal. I don't want this to be the normal. And I think God is greater than COVID-19. Right. Amen. But we've also got to learn to rejoice in the Lord through these times and be excited about what he's going to do and what he's already doing. So the believers praised God and were respected by all people. More and more, listen, more and more people were being saved every day and the Lord was adding them to the group. Wow, you mean people got saved when they weren't coming to church? People aren't getting saved by coming to church in most cases. People are getting saved because we're taking the gospel to them and we're meeting them where they are and we're meeting them at the place of their needs. And that's the position God has put us in. So we need to understand that he has sent us. And this is our time. Number four, last point for today. God is saying to you this morning that we have a powerful message of hope. So let's realize he's not surprised or unaware. He's been preparing us for this for over 18 months. 
Now he's sending us. And the question is, well, if he's sending us, what is he sending us to do? He's sending us to deliver a message, that a powerful message of hope. What is that message? I said, I was praying this week, and I said, Lord, what message do you want the storehouse to specifically give to the people that we are interacting with and coming across? And the Lord said something that kind of surprised me. He said, I want you to look at your website. And I said, Lord, I don't need to look at the website. I wrote it. I know what's on there. He said, no, you need to go back to it. And I went to our website, which, by the way, if you're watching this morning, please check out the website. It's www.thestorehouse.church. Um, we've had a young lady step in and manage our website, and she's updating it, and it is really becoming uh, much better, much nicer, and much more informative. So the Lord told to go to the website, and I want you to read the About section. The, click on the tab that says About and read the About page. And I said, all right, Lord. And it says this. It has our mission statement, our, our purpose, which is the storehouse, connecting people with God's provision. There should be a slide for this. Connecting people with God's provision. And then it goes on to say this. Why do we exist? We exist to lead people to an understanding of God's love and his desire to bring wholeness to every area of their life. Spiritually, emotionally, relationally, physically, and financially. That's why we exist. That's what God's called us to do. Connecting people with God's provision. So it... it, it <laughs> As the Lord explained this to me four years ago, it's vertical and horizontal. We're connecting people vertically with God's provision by leading them into a place where they understand His love and His desire to bring wholeness. That's our vertical connection. Next slide, if I could. Our horizontal connection is this, to connect people with each other using God's resources to build strong families and strong communities. And I read that and I just went, that's exactly what we need to be doing right now. And the Lord said, I've prepared this church for this moment for the last four and a half years. That statement came to me as I was revamping our, uh, our mission, our vision, our purpose kind of rebranding the church, giving us a fresh purpose over four years ago. And now it makes more sense than ever before. Would you agree? Say amen. amen. So that is our vision. That's our purpose. That's what God has prepared us and now moved us out to accomplish, to get people connected to him and to keep people connected to one another, sharing our resources and that which we have with each other. So how do we do that? Well, again, the answer is on our website. I love this. Here's the message we need to send to people. Philippians 4.19 says this, and this same God who takes care of me, say me, me. will supply all of your, say your, your, will supply all of your needs from his glorious riches, which have been given to us in Christ Jesus. This is a challenging time. We've already heard that there's people in our church that have uh, had their hours reduced. Some have lost their jobs. I want you to be encouraged this morning. God is not surprised he saw this coming. And one piece of that message of hope is that the same God who takes care of me will supply all of your needs according to Christ's abundance. Grab hold of that scripture. Let God know specifically what you need and watch God move. 2 Peter 1.3, I love this, says the second part of our message is this. His divine power <clears throat> has granted to us all things that pertain to life and to godliness 
through the knowledge of him who called us to his own glory and excellence. We have his divine power on our side. While the world seems to be just a little bit crazy, we have the power of the unmovable, unshakable God and the ever-consistent Holy Spirit to move in our lives. The third part of our message is this. Remind people, as Jesus says in John 10, that my purpose is to give them a rich and satisfying life. But pastor, the world's gone crazy. You don't know what it's like out there. I do know what it's like out there. And here's what I'm going to say to you this morning. Get your head out of the news and get your head in the good news. Stop looking at the panic that's being spread throughout our country and focus on the scriptures that I just gave you that God promises to take care of us. God promises He knows my need. God promises that He will supply everything I need for my life. And He's promised me that I can be whole emotionally, spiritually, physically, and financially. I believe God's trying to get our attention away from the distractions and the negativity that is just swirling all around us and to focus our attention on the unchanging Word of God so that we will be encouraged and so that we can minister to those whose world seems to be falling apart around them. Now I want to finish this morning with something else. That's my encouraging word in keeping with our series. It's an amazing time and opportunity for us while we're quarantined at home and many of our social Preferences have been taken away. It's a wonderful time for God to get our attention and speak to us with some clarity. And it's our job to listen to him. But here's some things that your pastor wants you to know. This is life for the next few weeks. And I want you to write these down, take a picture on the screen, and really, really, really pay attention to what I'm about to say. This is critical for the church to not just survive, but to thrive and grow in Jesus name. I want you to know first off that through this, you're going to be fine. We're going to come through this on the other side, stronger, more secure in the word of the Lord than we've ever been before. Unprecedented, difficult times have always grown the church and caused it to flourish. But I also want you to know this. It's going to test your depth and your faith in the Lord. You see, it's easy to fall away when we don't gather together on a regular basis. It's easy to say, well, I'll turn on the Facebook live feed, but I'm going to go do the dishes and kind of listen with one ear. It's easy to say, well, I don't need to check it out live. I can watch it later on during the week. And then your week gets busy and you never hear the word of the Lord. Do not allow that to happen. Do not allow this to be a time where we drift away and suddenly you're floating out there in the fear and uncertainty of the world because you didn't stay connected to your body, your family here at the storehouse. Stay connected. So here's what I want you to know in the next few weeks. The church will be open during the week. I'm keeping my normal hours here. I'm here Tuesday through Fridays. Uh, I do try to protect my Mondays off uh, and have some sanity in my life. So church will be open for prayer. If you want to come in and pray in the sanctuary or use the fellowship hall, just send me a quick text and say, Pastor, I'd like to be at the church and have some prayer time. We can accommodate a prayer meeting, 10 people in here, 10 people in the fellowship hall, 10 people at the Moore's house, 10 people in my office. We can accommodate prayer prayer groups. So the church is open. If you need to talk to your pastor, come see me. Send me a text, make sure I'm here, and we'll get together. Life is going on as normal during the week. So church is open. Uh, Feel free to be here. Secondly, don't allow the fear and anxiety to get a foothold in your life. The world is in a bit of a panic. 
and they're kind of freaking out. God reminded me this week that perfect love casts out all fear. And God's love, the love of your father, is a perfect love. So you're not only loved perfectly by the God of all creation. May I say to you this morning, and look at me carefully, Facebook, you are loved by your pastor and your leaders, and you are loved by your family here at the storehouse. We are here for you. We will do what we can to get you through this. Do not allow fear to take a grip and a foothold. Do not allow anxiety to get a foothold in your life. We shared a scripture Wednesday night, and I don't have it in front of me. I hope I don't blow it. But in Philippians chapter 4, Paul says this to the church. He says, uh, and the version I read, I, I love the way it read. It said this, do not worry about anything. And then he gives us the solution. Paul doesn't just stop there. Hey, no worries. Be happy. Paul doesn't stop there. He says, don't worry about anything. But instead... Instead of worrying, pray about everything. Make your specific requests known to God. I love that. What does that mean? Pray about what you need. If you're feeling anxious, tell the Lord. Father, I'm feeling a little anxious. I'm feeling a little unsettled. I'm a little frightened. Let him know what you need. Lord, we need some food in this house. <clears throat> I went to the store. The shelves were empty. Honestly, Lord, I need some toilet paper. Don't be afraid to tell him that. He will meet your needs. Nothing is too trivial for God. So he says, pray specifically. Tell God exactly what you need. And then he says this, and the peace of God will rule your heart. He goes on to say, it's a peace of God that is too great for the human mind to comprehend. That that peace will overwhelm you. Don't let the craziness of this world cause you anxiety, fear, and panic. The scripture goes on to say in Philippians 4, 6, and 7 that God will keep our hearts and our minds in peace. Press into the Lord. Don't, don't shrink back. Press in. Don't allow fear and anxiety to have a foothold. <clears throat> As I said earlier, check out our new and improved website. There's a new wall on there, a new tab for prayer requests. It's our prayer wall. We're, we're still kind of working on this, but Samantha's done such a great job. So you have two options. You can list a prayer request on there or a need that can be shared with anyone who wants to log on to that page, the storehouse.church. Or you have an option if you want to send a prayer request that's a little more private and needs to be a little more confidential. You can uh, fill in the box on there and hit send, and it'll send an email directly to me, and I will share that most likely with my wife. And uh, we as leaders will be praying for those requests on a daily and regular basis. So you have the option of having the whole church pray for you or having just your leaders pray for you. But take advantage of that. It's on our website. I want you to use this time also to minister to your families. It's easy to say, well, I'm home now and I don't know what to do. I'm hoping that this morning your family is gathered around your television, your, your tablet, your laptop, or your cell phone, and you're watching this broadcast from the storehouse. We are going to be working during the week as to how to do ministry to our specific groups. How do we minister to our kids who are no longer coming together for our Revelation kids? How do we minister to our youth group? How do we minister to the women and the men and our individual groups, including our Sunday school class on Sunday morning? We're going to have a solution announced uh, early this week. Most likely we're going to be using Zoom video conference calls. So watch for announcements this week as to how to get connected with your group on Zoom. Okay, next slide. So minister to your families. That's important. Consider having a watch party with a few people at your house. When we go live streaming or when we do some Zoom conference calls, consider having some folks over, again, that are healthy. Have a live stream uh, uh, watch party. Invite friends to watch the video with you that aren't in your house, and let's spread this as far as we can. As long as you're healthy, you can get together in groups of less than 10. I would like you to consider hosting a small group at your house for the purpose of Bible study. It's important that we stay connected and we connect as often in person as we are still allowed to do. So if you're interested in having a home group, let me know. Send me a text or an email. 
My phone number, by the way, if you want to text me, is 407-947-7573. Again, that's 407-947-7573. Send me a text. My email is pastore at the storehouse.church. Send me an email. I want you to check on and encourage one another often. Let's not take for granted that everybody's just fine and making it through this. First off, we need to make sure we get the word out as to what's happening at the church. So I'm challenging each of you this week and for the next few weeks, call four people every week until we're allowed to come back together and just ask them, how are you doing? And if they say, I'm fine, then your next question should be, no, how are you really doing? What can we do to serve you? Four people, call them this week, not text. I want them to hear your voice. I want you to call your pastor and say, Pastor, how you doing? Because I want to hear your voice. I want you to stay faithful in your giving. This is probably going to be one of the biggest challenges. I've already talked to people in our congregation that lost a job and that have reduced hours. May I say to you in great love, that's the time to press in in your giving. We exercise faith when we give when it's not so easy. And while we may not be meeting on a regular basis, we still have expenses at the church that need to be met. I can promise you as a pastor, and our council will attest to this, we have trimmed our budget to the, 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 the lowest it can be and still function reasonably as a church. We have no excessive expenses. We've finished contracts, finished leases. We're done with the, uh, some of the costs that we've had. We are down to a reasonable amount of expenses in this church. Don't panic and say, well, Pastor, I'll give when I can. I'm not working. My hours have been cut. No, press in. My wife said this to me this week. She said, remind people to give out of their need. When we give above and beyond, that's when the Lord blesses us. I was driving in this morning and the Lord said, remind the storehouse and the body of Christ. You reap according to what you sow. Amen. If you need a big crop, you got you to gotta sow a big field. And it's painful. I love the illustration I read about a farmer who was down to no food. Droughts had wiped them out and it was just coming into planting season. And, and his only hope was for his next crop. And his little son went out to the barn and he ran back into the house and said, Dad, I'm so excited. He said, what, what are you excited about? He said, I found this bag of seeds. We can grind it up. We can make flour and we can eat bread and we're going to be okay. And his dad said, son, we can't eat that seed. That's for the next harvest. We have to plant that seed to gain what we need to survive. Amen. Don't eat the seed that God has given you right now. It may only be a little bit left, but don't, don't consume that. Set that aside for what God wants to do. So stay faithful in your giving. In fact, for those of you who still have a good, solid, regular income, if you would, be generous and consider giving to our Benevolence Fund. If you give on Tithely, which is how now almost all of us are going to have to give, you can put a note section in there and you can say, hey, here's my check for $1,000. Some of you just went, $1,000. And in that $1,000, i am giving $900 to my offering, and you can put a note, and $100 to Benevolence. Now, you can do that with any amount of money. Um, but... Earmark something for benevolence. Why is that important? Because we do have people that have lost their jobs, have reduced hours, have expenses they can't meet. We can, our goal is, as a church, we want to help our family in this time of need. We want to share what we have. And as our benevolence is healthy, we can feed families, we can provide them gasoline, uh, we can help them with the needs they have. But that really uh, all hinges around our benevolence fund. Next slide. I want you to look for updates on Facebook. For right now, Facebook is going to be our main platform. We're adding things during the week, but our main platform is going to be Facebook. If you're not on Facebook, get over your social, whatever it is, get back on. You don't have to be involved in all the drama. Just watch the storehouse page and look for updates on Facebook. 
That's how we're going to reach a lot of you is on Facebook. However, as an alternative to Facebook, I want everybody watching, including those nine of you in the sanctuary, because we can't have 10, the eight of you and me, um, do me a favor. I need you, not all at once, send me a text with your name and your email address so that I know and our administration knows that we have current access, accurate information to your texts and your email accounts so that we can cover updates on Facebook via text and via emails. We can also send out invitations to Zoom conferences and other ministries that are taking place. So again, my number is 407-947-7573. Include your name. Don't assume I know whose number this is. And send me a text. Give me your email as well. Whatever email you want to be contacted. Now, Wednesday nights, we're going to start our first Wednesday night this week with a Zoom conference. With the information you send me, your text number or your phone number, your email, that information, I'm going to return to you an invitation to join our Zoom conference on Wednesday night at 7 o'clock. All you need is a smartphone, a tablet, a laptop, or a computer. You'll log on. There'll be a conference number. I will be the host, and you will pop up on screen. Please use the video portion. You can go with just the audio, but frankly, I want to see your face, and I know you want to see this handsome devil right here. Okay, devil's not the right word. This handsome young man right here. So use the video feature, and let's log on to our Zoom conference on Wednesday night. You'll have that information by Tuesday. Uh, I have to set Zoom up on Monday. Next slide. Above all, here's what your pastor is asking you to do. Please be gracious and please be patient. I am not aware of any pastor who's had to minister through a time like this in our lifetime. These are truly uncharted waters. And while there are some tremendous resources out there, we're kind of making this up as we go along and finding out what works best. Please be patient. Please be gracious. We're going to make some mistakes. <laughs> I had a couple walk into church this morning because we forgot to tell them we're not having service. That's on me. But they're gracious and patient and they're here among us. By the way, my wife is here this morning. She said, do you want me to go to church to support you? And I said, absolutely. I'd love to have at least one person and the media team who is here as well in the congregation. That'd be great. Now, something funny, my wife and I still came to church in separate cars. <laughs> I said, you realize we're taking separate cars still, right? She said, oh, yeah. But that's because she has to go deliver food to somebody after service this morning. So we decided to take separate cars because she has to cover some of the folks in our body today. So we are keeping things as normal as possible when we came to church in separate vehicles. We're going to make some mistakes. Here's the thing. If we can find better ways to do things throughout the next few weeks, we will adopt, adapt, and we will do things in a better manner. If you have suggestions on how to do things better, send me those suggestions. Doesn't mean we'll take all of them, but I'm open to suggestions and better ways. There's technology out there that you may be aware of that I'm not. So the main focus as you're thinking about this is how do we stay engaged as a group? How do we stay together? How do we encourage one another? Matter of fact, on Facebook, I'm going to try, no, I'm not going to try. I'm going to post just some encouraging words several times during the week on our storehouse page. Most likely a video, sometimes maybe just uh, uh, a word that's uh, a written word. But pay attention to Facebook. We want to encourage one another. I want you as our body at the storehouse, post your stuff on Facebook. Encourage one another. Tag people in your posts. Send out a scripture. Encourage someone every day throughout the week. Let's encourage one another. Be gracious with each other. Be patient with each other. Can we do that? 
If we can find a better way to do things, we will. As I said, if you have ideas that will help us foster community and communication, let us know. Our goal is to stay together. While we may be dispersed, we are not disbanded. We're here to encourage one another and to grow. This is an excellent, unprecedented opportunity to share the good news of Jesus Christ with your coworkers, your neighbors, the people that are in a panic at the store. Let's spread the good news of Jesus. We have the most powerful need to get the word out. I want to pray this morning, and I want you to pray with me over a few things today. As I close, let me say this before we pray. If you have questions, Email me or text, call me. I would love to hear your voice. If you have questions, call me. If you have ideas, let me know. If you have needs, let us know. We'll do our best to meet your needs. We're a small church with some limited resources, but I promise you we'll do our best to help meet your needs. Our family, this family, this church comes first, and we'll do our best to help you. Encourage one another. Talk to four people this week. Put words up on Facebook. Let us know this morning that you're watching. Send an encouraging word on the video thread that's taking place right now. And in the future, as we do live feeds, invite people to watch the live feed. This is a great opportunity to grow this church. And as people start watching us live, when we do come back together, won't it be amazing to see these seats filled up with people who came to know the Lord through this incredibly challenging time? I want you to pray with me this morning. Father, I thank you that while the church may be scattered, we've not disbanded. And Lord, that through this uh, time of challenge, you have shown us and proven historically that God has done mighty things and the church has always risen up and grown and become stronger through the tough times. This morning, Lord, there's some things I want to pray for specifically. I pray first and foremost for all of the families that have been infected and affected with this COVID-19 virus. It's real and it's here. Lord, I pray that you bring healing to those that have been infected. And I pray that you have bring, you will bring peace and comfort and stability to those families that have been affected by this, Lord that they would turn to God in this time of need and uncertainty, and they would come to know a loving Heavenly Father that can meet all of their needs and bring healing in Jesus' name. Father, I pray for those this morning, not just in our body, but throughout this country that are experiencing economic disruption. Lord, that this whole situation would come and pass quickly, Lord, as America repents and returns to God that this virus would be stopped and arrested in its tracks. And Lord, that our economy, our economy can recover. Lord, for those that have been impacted economically, that you would be their source. May we learn to rely on you and turn to you as our source and our provider. May we not panic, Lord. May we not become disappointed or depressed. Lord, may we look to you as the source of all of our needs in Jesus' name. Father, we pray this morning for our country and our leaders. That you would give them wisdom and insight how to navigate through this time. How to best protect the people of this nation. How to best protect the economy. May the Spirit of God speak to our leaders. May they seek your wisdom through prayer and through the Word of God. Let those that know you in our government rise up and be strong. Let them hear your voice. Let them follow after the wisdom that you're providing for them. I pray, Father, this morning that you would empower the church for this unprecedented opportunity to share the good news and to gather the harvest. Let us realize that we walk in the fullness of the power of the Holy Spirit. I pray this morning, Lord, that you give us wisdom and creativity, that we can share the good news with our neighbors. We can share the good news that may be a bit to those that may be anxious and a little fearful this morning. Give us wisdom and creativity, how to minister to those that need comfort 
and peace this morning. Allow us, I pray, Father, to clearly hear your voice. And when we do, may we respond obediently. There are opportunities that you're opening for us over the next few weeks that would have never been possible without this situation. Help us hear your voice. Give us the courage to respond and be obedient. Give us the courage to speak the words that you drop in our spirit as we hear you. Give us the courage to share the good news of Jesus Christ with those around us. Let us be the light and the salt of the earth. This is our time to shine. You've called us to be the light. Let this be the church's time to shine. We were created for this moment. You've prepared us for this moment. Help us to rise to the call, to rise to the call and to function with confidence. In Jesus' name, amen. And everybody said amen. amen. Listen, I love you, church. I'm sorry we're not together in person. If you need your pastor, call me. Um, call one another during the week and we'll uh, get together Wednesday night. Look for a Zoom invitation for Wednesday night at 7 o'clock and we will live stream again next Sunday at 11 o'clock. God bless you. Stay connected.